okay okay so you are here and you want to run your own CI CD pipeline on GitLab CI CD you want to start to learn and test how it works but you do not want to provide them with your credit card so how can we uh, run our own testing runner in GitLab CI CD without giving away the credit number to the website because you know internet follow me and um, learn in five minutes how to achieve it easily and for free first let's create a new project on GitLab like the one that I am launching right now and now let's say that this project is going to be part of my temporal projects and it is going to be a test ci cd project i'm going to keep it private it doesn't matter and yes why not let's create the project with a readme a proper readme file here it is now we need to define a pipeline, but look at this. We have a warning from GitLab telling us, come on, you really need to provide your own runners or either give me your credit card so I know that you will be responsible. They are not going to charge you any amount of money. It is just a way to control bad actors on the internet that are abusing of the runner services. That is why we cannot have nice things in the internet. Anyway, the point here is that it is super easy to configure your own runner. Uh, follow me to the left part of the project and we need to choose settings. And from settings, we go to CI-CD. And once we are here in CI-CD, we expand the runner tab like this oh sorry not like this but like that now first thing you can take advantage of the shared pool of runners but this is not what we want to do we want to run our own so we are going to disable the shared runners pool and create a new runner like this one new project runner is the button that we need to push the, then we select linux and we provide a tag for our new runner the machine that will execute the pipeline which is going to be docker in docker okay docker in docker is going to be the the tag that will allow us to later when we understand better how ci cd works select a particular set a subset of runners to execute pipelines that require some characteristics super important activate run and tagged jobs this is the way to allow us to create super simple pipelines that will not even require to define this docker in docker uh, tag to, to choose our runner and once we have that, we press create runner. Okay, we have defined our runner, but we do not have it in place. So the next thing that you are going to need to need is a machine that is able to run containers. Uh, take note of this token because we will use it later, okay? So just copy it to the, to the clipboard, for example, and save that for later. And don't close this screen because we will need it uh, uh, later to check that everything is all right. The next step is, is where can I find a machine to run my Docker containers? If you are just learning, you can take advantage of play with Docker. <laughs> This service is super cool and will allow you to run experiments on Docker for free through your browser. 
Of course, don't put any sensible data here. Use only, use it only to, to learn and to run pipelines that do not contain any important information. This is super important because this is a shared environment that is not intended to be focused on security, okay? Anyway, I'm going to jump here. Oh, and of course, if you have access to any Docker instance on a public cloud or your own laptop, you can use it instead of this service. This is just because it is super easy to, to play with it. I am going to click on a start and I'm going to add an instance that is going to be our, our runner. Here it is the user inter interface for this instance. Let me just clear it. Sorry for the small size of the, of the font face, but it is something that I do not want to change because not always works as expected inside this user interface. Now we have access to a, a computer through our browser with Docker already in place. If we run Docker version, here it is the answer to the command, and we can use it to start our runner. How do we do that? The first thing that we are going to, to do is to create the volume, the disk, that will contain the information with the configuration of the runner. I'm just going to paste the line because I have it in the instructions in my cheat sheet. I will share it with you later. There is a simple URL to reach that uh, cheat sheet. Here it is. We have our Docker hard drive configured and the next step is to execute the agent that will interact with the system to create our runner. Again, I not, I am not going to spend too much time here. It is basically an, an image that will execute the, the, the infrastructure to communicate with the coordination uh, system of GitLab CI CD. It is being downloaded and it will be installed soon. Let me, let me save you a few seconds of your life. Oh no, it's already here. It is super cool. So, the next thing that we need to do is to configure this runner to be able to interact with our project. To do that, I'm going to clear the screen again and we will execute another command taking advantage of Docker. Again, the instructions will be available in the in the cheat sheet and here what you are doing is executing the register command. Now you need to provide two things. First, the name of the GitLab instance that we will use to coordinate the jobs, the pipelines, and that is going to be https dash dash gitlab.com. And then the registration token that if everything is as expected, it will be uh, you took note of it before. So that was our previous registra uh, registration token. And okay, we need a, a name for this runner. This is going to be a play with Docker, Docker in Docker runner. And what kind of GitLab runner is this? In this case, we are going to configure the runner to be a Docker runner. It's not because we are using it uh, through Docker, but because we want to execute our pipelines inside containers. So we type Docker. And finally, which is the default image to be able to execute the workloads? And this is super important. Use Docker colon Docker in Docker. So Docker uh, D I N D as the image th that we will use this way, this container will be able to run other containers too. Okay, looks like it is at least properly configured. Let's check it. I'm going to clear the screen again. 
I'm going to use Docker PS just to, to see what uh, are the containers, containers in place. The container is, uh, has an ID starting with the number 71. So, Docker, please, please show the logs of the container starting with 71 and follow the output of the logs. <gasps> Configuration loaded, build zeros. So, it seems that we have configured it. So, uh, now we can just check it back in our docker uh, in our gitlab page so we go back to the other tab with the configuration of our gitlab page and let's see oh here it is you have created a new runner awesome we can go to the runners page and now we should see our runner here ah it is uh, working and available for our project. So, oh, forget about this other one, it is just another runner for another, another laboratory. And now, let's create our first pipeline. Super simple pipeline, but enough to check if everything is in place. So let's go back to the project overview. And let's add a new file. The name of the file should be the the name that we uh, use for all our pipeline so let's start with dot gitlab cicd and the content of the pipeline i cannot think of a pipeline that is simpler than this one test script echo hello okay i'm going to just commit this pipeline and this should trigger the execution of everything. We still have here our message warning us that maybe it is not going to work, but let's see if it is happening something in our runner instance. So I go back to, oh, I go back to our Docker, a play with Docker instance. And as you can see, it looks like that different things are happening here. So our runner received the instructions to execute the pipeline. And if we go back to our, to our system and we see, for example, our project overview, we see how the pipeline was executed with a success. Um, let's try it. So let's try to, to get the details of the execution of the pipeline. So we go to build, we go to pipelines, and our pipeline was executed with a past. And here we are. Our test step was correctly run. Oh, this is so cool. So we can now just turn off this warning. Okay. If you want to, to take a look at the instructions in a, in a text format, feel free to open this address, bit.ly slash gitlab dash runner and you should see the instructions as a GitHub guest, okay? If you have any question, question, you know how to contact me, don't hesitate to do it. And thank you so much for your attention.